that because I do get a lot of questions. Should we supplement like the LD omegas? Um, you know, because even people, you know, some people are, sh if they're looking to lose weight, they're a little bit sensitive to, you know, the caloric density of nuts and different things, which are, yes. which of course, of the ALA. So curious to see your spin on that. The big thing uh, knock against was uh, ALA versus EPA and DHA. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the body, our bodies, just like all herbivores and even some omnivores, they convert ALA down into different forms and eventually into EPA and then finally at the very bottom, DHA. So there's some concern that do we convert that efficiently? Do we mm -hmm. convert it enough for the needs of the human body? And so they looked in the bloodstream and they found very low conversion rate, less than 1%. And they said, well, is that enough to supply the brain? So it was called the enzyme theory. And they said, at first, let's, okay, we're looking maybe in the plasma. Maybe it's not showing up in the plasma. Let's actually look at whole red blood cells because then it's actually getting into the cell. So it's intracellular. And when they did that, they found that the more ALA that you consume, actually the less DHA shows up in the whole blood. And they're like, mm. huh? Why is that? Well, there's actually a really, really good reason for that. ALA does not convert to DHA in the bloodstream intentionally. DHA can actually elevate LDL cholesterol. E ALA and EPA do not. They actually elevate the good cholesterol, HDL. So you got a negative there that you don't want in your bloodstream. You take that even further. ALA and EPA both protect blood from, or cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, from oxidizing. Mm. DHA does not. It can actually interfere with that process. Mm. So actually taking DHA preformed outside the body and putting into your bloodstream may actually be a problem for people who have higher LDL cholesterol, may actually interfere with their HDL cholesterol levels, your good cholesterol may actually interfere with the oxidation, which can then lead to atherosclerotic plaques, causing Alzheimer's, dementia, heart attack, stroke, erectile dysfunction. There's a good reason the body doesn't convert ALA or EPA because they're better at cardiovascular protection. Amazing study looked at, okay, what if we give people ALA, will it improve their CR? CRP, their C-reactive protein and other biomarkers uh, that we're looking at it. And sure enough, ALA uh, did actually greatly improve that. But they said, well, what about EPA and DHA if we just gave it to that? And it did some, but then they said, well, let's give ALA on top of that. And it improved their scores even more than that. So <laughs> ALA was more effective than EPA and DHA at improving cardiovascular states and markers. Now they did it on type 2 diabetes, and they found ALA and EPA both improved type 2 diabetes mellitus markers, 20 to 30%. DHA, zero. No effect on diabetes at all. So we're looking in the bloodstream, whether it's diabetes markers or cardiovascular markers or cholesterol concerns. ALA and EPA are both significantly better at doing that job. And DHA actually might be a negative. So it would be better if the body actually made that conversion in the tissues where DHA was being used. So they did some further research. This study is called, Is DHA Synthesis from ALA Sufficient to Supply the Adult Brain? Uh, Professor Brasnett led the research brilliant uh, researcher. And they found that up to 50 grams of DHA was being stored in our fat tissues. Hmm. So they said, well, how much is needed by the brain? Two and a half to 3.8 milligrams per day. No. <laughs> so we have about 20 to 30 years worth of stored DHA in our body at any given time. That's just based on brain. Obviously, the brain is the biggest concern for DHA, there's DHA is used for other things in our body too as well. But that's just like, wow. So mm -hmm. they did a second way of looking at it. 
I looked at carbon isotope. So uh, uh, omega-3s are long chain fatty acids. That long chain is carbon chains. They're carbons all stuck together. Well, as they break down, they break down into certain isotopes. And if you measure those isotopes, you can see exactly how much ALA is converted to DHA. It leaves a signature, an undeniable signature. It won't be there unless that conversion has happened. And they found that not only were we converting so much DHA, 50 times more DHA was being converted in tissues than in the bloodstream, and yet our omega-3 index is measured on bloodstream mm. and red blood cells. I'm like, we're looking in the total wrong place. We've based all of our assumptions on this. Because of course, if you take outside endogenous preformed EPA and DHA and drop them into your digestive tract, first they're going to show up in the bloodstream. You put them there. Mm -hmm. But the body is wise in saying, I will hold on to ALA because it can convert down to all other five forms, SDA, ETA, EPA, DPA, and DHA whenever you need it however much you need it for each specific tissue, for each specific gender, for each specific age group, for each specific disease state. You're going to need different amounts of each one of those. So they said, well, what about those first three, ALA, SDA, and ETA? It's a unidirectional conversion. So it only goes one way. Why would you convert ALA all the way down to DHA, which was the last one? Because once it becomes DHA, that's it. You're done. It can't go back to any of the other states. Hmm. That makes no sense at all. You'd keep it as ALA as much as you can. They found out the body hoards ALA and stores it hmm. for up to a year in the body. They, hmm. they put a radioactive tracer on it to find out how long it stays in the human body. ALA will park in the body and hold it and wait till you need it for a year. Hmm. When they looked at the DHA, they saw that 50 times more conversion that was happening in the blood, so much so that it was just topping off the stores in the brain and the liver and the fatty tissues of DHA to hold it, just topping off those stores to make sure you have enough. 60% of the rest of the DHA was just being burned off as calories, hmm. was just used as energy, wow. beta oxidation, just burn it up. We don't have any use for it. So this okay. big concern about DHA, and then I'm looking at, okay, wait a minute, you have omega-6 and omega-3, and you have ALA is the primary precursor, the only essential omega-3, and the only essential uh, omega-6 is LA, and they all convert down. Well, how many of you are concerned that you're not getting enough arachidonic acid? <laughs> no one. No one is it. How many of you are taking arachidonic acid as a supplement? Yeah, no mm. one, because it's pro-inflammatory. You don't want it. You let your body make its own only when it needs it for pro-inflammatory states, like when you get injured. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, that's the exact same enzymes used in both converting ALA to DHA and uh, LA to arachidonic acid. It's the identical desaturase and elongase enzymes. They do both. So if there's not enough enzymes to convert to DHA, well, then there wouldn't be enough enzymes to create DPA, omega-6. And how many of you even heard of DPA, omega-6? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Because we don't worry about it. Because our body is so efficient at producing it when and where it needs it. Mm. This changes the whole understanding of omega nutrition. Mm -hmm. And the, we have been looking at the studies, one in the wrong place. It's not in the blood. It's in the tissues. And of course, it can't be measured because you have to go in and take biopsies. We're not going to go take pieces of people's brains to find out how much DHA is there. We need a better test for that. Mm -hmm. But this is how wrong. If you test a vegan on the omega-3 index, nine, over 90% 90 will fail. Mm -hmm. Even if they're grossly getting more omega-3 than their body could even ever process and ends up burning it in beta oxidation. Mm. That test is wrong and that test is false and it's scaring vegans about omega-3s. And we mm. really need to get this research out there so that people stop making this assumption that we're not getting enough omega-3s in our diet. We are, mm. we just don't have the right test because we're looking in the wrong place for it. 